Good afternoon and welcome back to KubeCon. John Furrier and I are live here from theCUBE studios in Detroit, Michigan, and very excited for an afternoon chock full of content. John, how are you holding up day two? I'm doing great, a lot of great content. This episode is going to be really good. We're going to talk about modern applications, Red Hat and Conveyor, all the great stuff going on. Yes, and it's got a little bit of a community spin, very excited. You know I've been calling out the great Twitter handles of our guests all week, and I'm not going to stop now. We have with us coffee art lover, Savitha, and she's joined with Christopher here from Conveyor and Red Hat. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? What do you, what, what's the vibe? Uh, I, Vibe's good. Yeah, very pretty good. good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, what, has anything caught your attention? You guys are KubeCon veterans. We were talking about Valencia and shows prior. Anything sticking out to you this year? Yeah, just the amount of people here. And this, like, post-COVID, it's just so nice to see this many people get together. Because the last couple of KubeCons that we've had, they've been good, but they've been much smaller. And we haven't seen the same presence that we've had. And I feel like we're just starting to get back to normal, what we had going like, pre-COVID with KubeCon. The, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And for me, it's the um, how everyone's like still respectful of everyone else, and that's what I so that's what nice. stick around to me. Like you go out of the conference center and you cannot see anyone like masked or like respecting anyone's space, but here, it's still there. Keeps you safe. So like I'm super happy to be here. Uh, I, yeah, I love that. I think I think that plays to the community. I mean, the CNCF yeah. community is really special. All these yeah. open source projects are layered. You run community at Red Hat. Tell us a little bit more about that. So I have been focusing on the Conveyor community side for a while now, since Conveyor got accepted into the CNCF sandbox project. I think, it, yeah, it's so exciting, and it's like, I'm so thrilled, and I'm so excited for the project. So it's something that I believe in. And I do a lot of Kubernetes stuff, and I learned a lot from the community. The community is what keeps me coming back to every KubeCon and keep me contributing. So I'm taking all the good stuff from there, and then like trying to incorporate that into the conveyor community world, but for like not at a scale of like 20 or like 30,000 people, but at a scale of like you know hundreds. We are in hundreds and hoping to like expand it to like thousands by next year, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Talk about the, the project. Give a quick overview of what it is, where it's at now. Obviously, it's got traction, you got some momentum. I want to hear from the customer, but give a quick overview of the project. Why are people excited about it? Uh, sure, so it is the uh, it is one of the open source app modernization tool sets that's available right now. So like that's super exciting. So so many people want to contribute to it, and uh, what we basically do is like you see a lot of large companies and they want to like do the migration and the journey and we just want to help them, you know, make their life easier. You know, we are like, so we are in this uh, environment which is like surrounded by cars. Think of it like a, a lane assist system or like think of it as an additional uh, system, smart system, but that's not taking control, like full control, but then there's it's there to like guide you through your journey, safe, and in a predictable way, and you reach your destination point in a you know much happier, safer, and like uh, sooner. So that's that's what we are doing. I know like that's a lot of um, talk, but if you want the technical thing, then I'll just say like we are here to help everyone who wants to modernize, um, um, help them by refactoring and re-platforming their applications in a safer and predictable way at scale. Awesome. Yeah, I think I got everything. What do you think, Christopher? Yeah, I mean we. We've seen a real need in the market to solve this problem as more and more companies are looking to go cloud native. Yeah. And I feel like in the last 10 years, we had this period where a lot of companies were kind of dabbling in the cloud and they, they were identifying the low hanging fruit for their migration. So they were starting out with new applications in the cloud. We're just starting to move into a period where now they're trying to bring over legacy applications. Now they're trying to bring over the applications that have been running their business for 10, 20, even 30 years. And we're trying to help them solve the problem of how do we start with that? How do we take a look at our, a holistic look at our applications and come up with a game plan of how we're going to bring those into being cloud native? The, yeah. Oh yeah, go. One of the things I want to get to, you mentioned replatforming and refactoring. A lot of discussion on what that means now. Refactoring with the cloud, we see a lot of great examples. People really getting a competitive advantage by refactoring enough kids, but replatforming also has meaning. 
um, it seems to be evolving. So you guys, can you share your, your thoughts on what's replatforming versus refactoring? Um, I, I'll let you go, yeah. Um, so for, um, for replatforming, there's a few different stages that we can, we can do this in. So we have this, this term in migration called lift and shift. It's basically taking something as is and just plopping it in and then having certain technologies around it that make it act in a similar way as it was before, but in more of a, a cloud type of way. Um, and this is a good way for people to get their feet wet, to get their, their applications into the cloud, but a lot of times they're not optimized around it. They're not able to scale, they're not able to um, have a lot of the cost effective things that go with it as well. So that's like the next step, is that that's the refactoring. We're actually taking apart this idea, these domains is what we would call it, for the business, and then breaking them down into their parts, which then leads to things like microservices and things like being able to scale horizontally through an edge. The benefits of the cloud higher level services. Absolutely. So you, re you shift to the platform, which is cloud, lift yep. and shift or get it over there, and then set it up so it can take advantage and yes. increase the functionality. Is that kind of yep. the difference? And one thing that we're seeing too is that um, these co companies are operating this hybrid model. So they brought some containers over and then they have legacy like virtual machines that they want to bring over into the cloud but they're not in a position right now where they can re refactor or even... Yeah, even you know, in position, no, it's not it's even not on the table yet. yet. So that's where we're also seeing um, opportunities where we can identify ways that we can actually lift and shift that VM closer at least to the containers. And that's where a lot of my conversations as a cloud success architect are of how do we how do we refactor but also re-platform in the most strategic manner. So is Conveyor a good fit for these kinds of opportunities? Yes. 100%. Um, so it it's it's uh, so it it actually asks you like it starts certain phases like assessment phase. Then it takes you asks you a bunch of questions about your infrastructure, your applications, and everything to gauge, and then provide you with the right strategy. It's not like one strategy. So it will provide you with the right strategy, either re-platform, refactor, or like what is best, retire, re-host, whatever, but re-platform and re, uh, refactor are the most that we are focused on right now. Um, hopefully that we, we might expand, but I'm not sure. Uh, so. You just brought up a really good point, and, and I was curious about this too, because Christopher, you mentioned you're working with largely Fortune 50 companies, so yep. some of the largest companies on Earth. We're not talking about, we're not talking about scale, we are talking about extraordinarily large scale. Thousands uh, yeah, of yeah, applications. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking a lot, I'm just sitting here listening to you thinking about the complexity. The yes. complexity of each one of these situations, and I'm sure you've seen some of it before, you've been doing this for a while, but, and, and you're mentioning that Conveyor has a different sorts of strategies. What's the flow like for that? How are you, I mean, just the, even thinking about it feels complex for me sitting here right now. Yeah, um, typically when we're doing a large scale migration that lasts anywhere from like a year or two sometimes with these Fortune 50 companies. You know, I think at least some of this yeah. legacy stuff has got to be. This is usually when they're already at the point where they're ready to move and we're just there to tell them how to move it at that point. Right. So you're right, there's years that have been going on to get to the point that we even, I'm involved. Um, but from process. an assessment standpoint, we spend months just looking at applications and assessing them using tools like Conveyor to just figure out, okay, are you ready to go? Are, do you have the green light or do, you, do we have to pull the brakes? And you're right, so much goes into that and it's all strategic. So, oh gosh, like I yeah. said, about a, a quarter or a third of our time, we're not even actually moving applications, we're assessing the applications and That's coming right. up with There's so many pieces to this puzzle. Absolutely. <laughs> and I bet there's some even hidden in the corners under the couch that, right. you know, that people it, forgot were even there. We learn new things every time, too. Yeah. Every migration, we learn new patterns and new difficulties, which is what's great about the community aspect, because we take yeah. those and then we add them into the community, into Conveyor, and then we can build off of that. So it's like you're sharing, when we're doing those migrations, when companies are using Conveyor and sharing that knowledge, we're building off what other people have done. We're expanding that. So there's a real advantage to using a tool like Conveyor when it comes to previous experiences. Yeah, are you, so what, tell me about some of the trends that you're seeing across the board with the folks that you're helping. Yeah, so trends-wise, like I said, um, I feel like the low-hanging fruit has been already done in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing very critical 
like mission critical applications that are typically 10, 20 years old um, that need to get into the, the cloud because they're, they're the term data gravity. So it's preventing them from yes. moving into the cloud. And it's usually a large, older, what we call monolithic application that's preventing them yeah. from, from moving. And trying to identify the ways that we can take that apart and strategically move it into the cloud. And um, when we were, uh, we had a, uh, a customer survey that went out to a few hundred different people that were using Conveyor. And the feedback we got was about 50% uh, of them are in the in currently migrating, large, like have large migrations going on like this. And then um, another wow. 30, 40% have that targeted for the next two years. So most of industry- So it's happening. It's happening now. Right. Um, this is a problem. This isn't a problem that we're, we're trying to future proof. It is happening now for most corporations. They're focused on finding ways to be cost um, optimized, and especially in, in the way our, our market's working in this post COVID world, it's more critical than ever. And a lot of people are pouring, even though they're cutting back expenses, they're still putting focus into their IT for these types of migrations. What's the persona of people that you're trying to? Um, talk to about Conveyor, who's out there, I mean the project. What's the community like? What's the, what's the community makeup and who, why should someone join the team? Why should someone come in and work on the project? What's the? So someone who is interested or trying to start their journey or someone who's already like going through a journey and someone who has went through the journey, right? They are like, they have the most experience of like what went wrong and where it could be improved. So we cater to like everyone out there pretty much, right? Because some point of the time, right now it's cloud native, right now this is an ecosystem. In five years, it would be like totally different thing, right? So the mission of the project is going to be like similar uh, or like probably same, help someone re-platform and re-host things into the next generation of whatever that's going to come. So we need everyone. So that is the focus area or like the target targeted audience Right now, we have interest from people who are actually uh, um, actively ongoing the migration and like the challenges that they are facing right now. So yeah. we so legacy enterprises that are up and running, yeah. full workloads, yeah. multiple yeah. productions, hundreds and hundreds of apps. Yeah. Whose yeah. boss has said, "We're going to the cloud." Yeah. <laughs> and we they go, oh, oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. "Oh boy, oh <laughs> boy." Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, okay, let's start looking. Let's. How do we do this? Lift and shift. Get replatform. Yeah. There's a playbook. Yes. There's a, there's a method, you lift and shift, you get it in there, get the core competency, use some yeah. managed service, restitch it together, yeah. go cloud native. So this is the cloud native roadmap. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the beauty of Conveyor is that it also gives you like plans. So like once it assists and analyzes, it comes up with plans and reports so that you can actually take it to your management and say like, oh, well let's just target these, these many applications, X number of applications in like two weeks. Now let's just do it in waves. So that is some feature that we are looking forward to in uh, Conveyor 3, which is going to be released in the first quarter of 2023. So it's exciting, right? It is uh, exciting, and so it makes a lot of sense. It, it makes everyone happy. It yeah. makes the engineers happy. Don't have to be overworked. It also like makes the Architects like Chris happy, and it also makes the very much so. <laughs> <laughs> as, as exemplified yes. right here. Yes, yes love that. It makes the management happy because they see that there is like progress going on, and they can like ramp it up, or ramp it down. Holiday season. Do not touch production, right? Do not touch production. <laughs> you so hear that, managers? Like used do to, not yeah. touch production. Yeah, yeah. Around the holidays. Also, also, so it's also friendships too, because people you know want to be in a, in a tribe that's yeah. experiencing the same things yes. over yeah. and yes. over again. I think Absolutely. that is really the camaraderie and the community data sharing. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's the beauty of community, right? Like, you can be on any number of teams, but you're on the same uh, team. Like, they made any number of companies, but on the same team, like, it was also like reflected in the keynotes, I think yesterday someone mentioned it. Sorry, I cannot recall the name of who mentioned it, but it's like, different companies, same team. Similar goal, we all go through a journey together. You Water know? level like, rises together too. Yeah. We, we learn from each other and, yeah. and that's what community is really all about. You can tell, folks at home might not be able to feel it, but I can, you can tell how community first you both are. Last question for you before we wrap up. Is there sure. anything that you wish the world knew about Conveyor that they don't know right now? Um. Or more people knew? And if not, our marketing team is nailing it and we'll just give them a high five. I think it, it goes with our just what we were talking about. It, it's not just a tool for individual applications and how to move it. It's how do we see things from a bigger picture. Yes. And this is what this tool 
ultimately is also trying to solve is how do we work together to move hundreds if not thousands of applications? Because it takes a village. And that's my biggest- Quite literally yes, with that And that's my and biggest size. advice to people who are considering this, who are in large yeah. enterprise or even smaller enterprise. Make sure that you understand this is a team effort. Make sure you're communicating and lessons learned on one team is going to be lessons learned for another team. So share that information. Uh, when you're doing migrations, make sure that all that, all that knowledge is spread because you're just going to end up repeating the same mistakes over and over again. That is a beautiful way to close the show. Savitha, Christopher, thank you so much for being with us. John, always a pleasure. And thank you for tuning into theCUBE live from Detroit. We'll be back with our next interview in just a few.